Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss the factor theorem. Uh, before we get into that, I want to show a few little connections, okay, that will make our lives a little bit easier. So first of all, I want to take the following uh, simple quadratic. Uh, and we're going to solve it, OK? So a little recap on solving quadratics. You've always got two options. You can factorize to solve it or use the minus B formula. I'm going to factorize to solve this. This is one of my easier quadratics because it only has one X squared, which means I can open the brackets straight away and put in X times X. And then I want factors of 12 that would add to make a plus seven. So um, in other words, what times what will um, make 12, but add together or subtract in some way to make seven. And the answer would be, of course, three and four, and it would have to be a plus three and plus four to add them together to make a plus seven. Now, that is it factorized. So X plus four is a factor and X plus three is a factor. And now if I'm going to go to the next step and solve, uh, I have two things that multiply to make zero. So either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. So um, that means X plus four is equal to zero or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And then, of course, if I take away 4 from both sides here, um, I solve and I get x is equal to 4. And if I take away 3 from both sides here, I get x and so on, I get x is equal to minus 3. So here's the connections. x equals minus 4 is a solution or a root. That's another word for a solution when your function is equal to 0 where it cuts the x-axis, in other words. Uh, so it is a solution or a root. And when x is equal to minus 4, if you work your way backwards, x plus 4 is the factor. OK? And when you have x plus 3 as the factor, that means x equals minus 3 is the root. So in other words, if you're told that x equals minus 3 is a solution or a root to this function, um, then x plus 3 is the factor. OK, so just want to highlight those connections because that is basically what the factor theorem says. So it states that if of k is equal to 0, then x minus k is a factor. Conversely, if x minus k is a factor, then f of k is equal to 0. And then if you have something of the form AX minus K, then F of K over A is equal to zero. Now, that's a little bit uh, complicated. So I'm going to show you loads of little examples and then you'll see it's actually not that complicated at all. So let's take the quadratic uh, X squared plus X minus 20. OK, and let this be the function. Now, if I solve this X squared plus X minus 20 equal to zero, OK, uh, so basically I'm letting f of x equal zero, put the quadratic equal to zero. And of course, I'm going to factorize it. Uh, factors of minus 20 to get a plus one when I add them together would be five and four. And to get a minus 20 when I multiply, then the signs would have to be different. And of course, to get a one when I add them together or, or subtract in this case uh, would have to be a minus four and a plus five. OK, so I know uh, that either minus x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 5. Now, the factor theorem states that if f of 4 is equal to 0, which it does, in other words, when you sub in 4 for the x, right, you're going to get the whole thing equal to 0. And I know that because I know it's a solution to the quadratic. OK, so f of 4 would of course be subbing in four for that X. And when I do that, I'm gonna get 16 plus four, which is 20 minus 20 is zero. So F of four is equal to zero, which means that X equals four is a root or a solution. And if X equals four is the root, then X minus four is the factor. OK, because if you work backwards, that means X minus four was equal to zero and work backwards again. The factor in the brackets must have been X minus four. And then likewise, uh, if it told me that uh, F of minus five is equal to zero, in other words, X equals minus five is a root, then I know that X plus five is the factor.
All right, let's try a question. To show that x plus 3 is a factor of x squared minus x minus 12. Well, you could factorize this and that way show it's a factor, but because we now know the relationship through the factor theorem, a quicker way to do that is if x plus 3 is the factor, that means that x equals minus 3 is the solution or the root, which means that when you sub in minus 3 for the x, the function into this as a function, then we should get zero. So to show that it's a factor, all I need to do is sub in minus 3 for the x. And see what we get. So that's going to be 9 plus 3 minus 12 is 0. So there we go. Since f of minus 3 is 0, then that means that x plus 3 is the factor. So let's try another question. Now, where the factor theorem really comes into play to be very useful to us is when we're dealing with cubics, OK, because it's not so easy to factorize cubics as it is quadratics. With quadratics, you've got your nice four step method. It's fairly straightforward. There's only two factors as well that you have to get. With cubics, it's different and it's more complicated. And that's why knowing the factor theorem can help us out an awful lot here. So this time with this question, we're being asked to show that x minus 2 is a factor of this cubic. So again, to show that this is a factor, I can use the factor theorem. And that implies that if x minus 2 is the factor, then x equals 2 is the root or the solution, which implies then that when you sub in 2 in for the x into the function, we should be getting 0. So let's write this as a function. So we have 2x cubed plus x squared minus 13x plus 6. And let's sub in 2 for the x and see what we get. So everywhere there's x, you're subbing in 2. So this gives you uh, 2 times 8 there plus 4 minus 26 plus 6, which is 16, and 4, which is 20, minus 26, which is minus 6, plus 6 is 0. So yes, since f of 2 is equal to 0, that then shows that x minus 2 is a factor. And you'd always need your conclusion statement at the end then. So since f of 2 equals 0, then by the factor theorem, x minus 2 must be a factor. OK, so there we go. OK, try this question. So we want to show that 2x minus 3 is a factor of 2x cubed minus 5x squared <clears throat> plus 5x minus 3. OK, so since 2x minus 3 is a factor, this would be one of the factors in a cubic. You'd have three factors being multiplied equal 0. Uh, and then, of course, each of those factors would be put equal to 0 to solve for the root. So we would get 2x is equal to 3, divide both sides by 2, x is equal to 3 over 2. So that's how we figure out the, the, the root or the solution. So that means by the factor theorem, then, that when you sub in 3 over 2 for the x, we should be getting 0. Uh, in total. So let's write this as a function. And all we need to show then is, as I said, when we sub in 3 over 2, if it's true that this is a factor, then 3 over 2 when I sub in uh, should equal 0. And it does. OK, so again, your little blurb conclusion. So since f of 3 over 2 is equal to 0, then that means that 2x minus 3 is a factor. And that is by the factor theorem. OK, so show that x minus 3 is a factor of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 and find the other two factors. OK, so. Here we have obviously information from the factor. If x minus 3 is the factor, then it's the x minus 3 is equal to 0, would be the three factors being multiplied together to, to, to give you the, the cubic. And then if, if the three things being multiplied is equal to 0, then 1 or 2 are all are equal to 0, which implies then that the solution here is x equals 3. 
So that means, um, implies by the factor theorem, that f of 3 should be equal to 0. So if we write this as a function, we have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. And subbing in 3 for the x, we get 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6. And that works out to be 27 minus 2 times 9 is 18 minus 15 plus 6. And that, of course, is 0. So there we go. We've shown that it is a factor. Now we're asked to find the other two factors. Now, the only way to find the other factors is to take this factor and divide it in. OK, so this is algebraic division. Now, there's a whole other video on algebraic division just to revise that process. So it is worth taking a look at if you're a little bit rusty on your algebraic division. What I'm going to do now is divide this into this, and that should give me the quadratic that will lead me to the other two factors. So with our division, we look at our first two terms and I ask myself, what am I doing to x? What would I multiply to x to get x cubed? And the answer is x squared. So you put your answer on top and then you take that and multiply by the full divisor. So I get x cubed minus 3x squared. And then you subtract, in other words, change the signs and we get minus 2x squared plus 3x squared, which is 1x squared and bring down the next term. And again, I go into the algebraic division process in a lot more detail in that video on it. So please do take a look if you're finding it hard to follow. Looking at the first two terms again, what do I do to x to get x squared? Um, I multiply by an x. So when you get this result, multiply by the full divisor and we, I get x squared minus 3x. And then I subtract. In other words, change the signs because when you subtract a negative, it's like adding. So I have minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x. Bring down the next term. What do you do to x to get minus 2x? You'd multiply by minus 2. And minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. And of course, when I subtract, in other words, change the signs, I get no remainder. So there we go. x minus 3 divides into that cubic x squared plus x minus 2 times. And now what I need to do, because I want the factors, I want to factorize this quadratic. So x times x, 2 times 1. Uh, and in order to get a plus 1, when I add these together, it would be a minus 1 plus 2. So my three factors are the x minus 3 from the start, and the x minus 1, and the x plus 2 from factorizing the quadratic. Now, just as the factor theorem can help us factorize a cubic, it can also help us solve a cubic equation. Um, now, if we're just told straight off, solve this cubic, we're not given any information about the factor uh, or a root with no kind of starting point. Unfortunately, with a cubic, you don't have a minus B formula. Um, we don't have a nice proper factorizing method. Uh, all the questions we've had so far have given us a little bit of information about one of the factors at least. So when you're starting a cubic um, from scratch, if you like, your only option is to try and find a root. In other words, try and find a solution by trial and error, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and sub in values for x to see if any of them works out to be zero. And then, of course, the minute you hit on a value for x that works, straight away you've got information about the factor. OK, so trial and error, we'll just try some values. So if we start off with x equals 2 and we sub it in, uh, we would get the following. Oh, we're getting minus 20. So no, that's not equal to zero. I'm going to try x equals 1 next. And that is equal to zero. So we've hit on a solution and that's basically the way you do it. Now, obviously, in the future, it's probably easiest to start off with one. But since I knew one was going to solve straight away, I just want to show you that it is just a case of trying a value, trying something else and, and, and waiting till you hit at zero. 
you won't have to go too far. You could try a minus one, a minus two. You will, with the cubic, if they ever give it to you, they will have one of the roots, uh, you know, a fairly low number, something that you would you would try in a, you know, and, and hit on in a couple of goals. So here we have it. One is a root. One is a solution. Um, because I'm after showing that f of one is equal to zero. And of course, if x is equal to one is the root, then x minus one equals zero. X minus one is the factor. And now you see, now that you have one of the factors, we'll be able to divide in to get the other factors. And in this case, when you divide in, you'll get your quadratic. And all we need to do to actually solve for the solutions here is solve the quadratic. So let's do the division. So what would you do to x, uh, multiply to x in order to get 2x cubed? Well, you would multiply by a 2x squared. Take that then and multiply it uh, by the full divisor. Subtract, in other words, change signs. And we have a minus 2x squared and bring down the next term. <coughs> Now, what would you multiply to x to get minus 2x squared? Would you need a minus 2x? Minus 2x times x is minus 2x squared. Minus 2x times minus 1 is plus 2x. Uh, change the signs. And I've got minus 24x and bring down the next term, plus 24. What would you multiply to x to get minus 24x? Well, you'd need a minus 24. And now multiply by the full divisor, I get the following. And of course, when I change the signs, I'm getting a remainder zero. So there we go. So x minus one divides into the cubic 2x squared minus 2x minus 24 times. And now I am going to factorize and solve this. So this is one of my more my trickier quadratics. So I'm going to do my four step method. You can always use the minus b formula for this, of course because we're solving, because we're getting the, the solutions in this particular question. But if they'd asked for just the factors of this cubic, you'd be forced to factorize. So again, there's a whole video on factorizing quadratics. Actually, there's three videos, I think, on factorizing quadratics. So do revise it if um, it's a little bit rusty. And there's also a video on solving quadratics using both your methods, factorizing and minus b formula. So that might be worth taking a look at that as well. My four step method is two times minus 24, first number by last number, which is minus 48. And now I want factors of minus 48 that are going to add together to make a minus two. Uh, and they would be six and eight. And the signs to make a minus two when I subtract would have to be minus eight plus six. And let's double check. Will those two numbers plus six times minus eight make a minus 48? And it will. So now rewrite your quadratic, two x squared plus 6x minus 8x minus 24 is equal to 0. And then let's factorize. That's 2x by x plus 3 minus 8 times x plus 3, which gives 2x minus 8 in one bracket and x plus 3 in the other. And it is, of course, equal to 0, which means that either 2x minus 8 is equal to 0, um, in which case we'll get 2x is equal to 8 and x is equal to 4. Or x plus 3 is equal to 0. In which case x is equal to minus 3. Oops. <laughs> so my solutions are, or my roots, x is equal to 1. I got that by tri uh, trial and error. Uh, and x is equal to 4. And x is equal to minus 3. And that's how you solve a cubic. Just try and hit on a root, find something that when you sub in, you get zero. And then by the factor theorem, then you've got information about the factor. And then you just have to divide in by the factor and then factorize and solve what's left.